Hello class, this is a recording um, about PA1. Since this is our first PA and um, it has several components, and we're using a new text editor, we're using a new uh, homework turning in system. So I will do this recording to give you some idea of how you should approach this assignment. So this assignment is due on Sunday, uh, January 14th. There are several uh, components for this assignment. The first thing is you should read through all these setup, so I won't go through all of them. One of the key things is uh, how you should get the starter code. So I'm using this uh, tool called MOBA Xterm. It is free. You can just Google it and then download the version. Uh, you can have a Mac version or Windows version. I think I'm using the Windows version in here. So once you log in. First thing, let me clear this part. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a folder. So make dir psa1, and then um, you have this folder in there. What you need to do is you need to copy the starter codes from the public folder into your own folder so you can work on it. So the way to get that is you can say cd psa1, get in this folder. Right now there's nothing in there. Then you should say CP. All our starter codes are under your home directory. There is a parent directory over there. Then there is a public. And then if I look at PSA1, then uh, PSA1. You copy everything in there. Stars means everything. Then you have a dot means to this current directory. You execute it. There we go. So these are the starter codes. Um, and then you go through the instruction and depending on which part of the assignment you are doing, you're going to kind of work on different part of this code. Um, let's see, let's go back to PA1. Um, so that's where you get your starter codes. You really don't need a remote window. This mobile term terminal is good enough for you to work on nearly all the assignment. Okay. Um, so come here, the first part is to do the research and academic integrity uh, agreement. So you do them. There, I don't think there's any confusion over there. The second part is the vocabulary. So we want to make sure that everyone knows uh, the terms that we're going to use um, in this class. So here are a few things about the, the commands that you can do. And also we give everyone a, a reference part called terms.java. It is part of the starter code. So if you look at it, there is this file called terms.java in there. So you can vim it, terms.java. And this basically t tells you a bunch of terms. What are parameters, what are arguments, and etc. You should read through them, make sure you understand what they're doing. And then uh, if you want to quit, just Q. Press escape first, then call it. And then you need to write down your answers to this extra credit uh, part in the file called read.md. It is not read.txt. It is not anything else. The extension must be .md. And you can just say vim readme.md. And you're going to start to edit it by pressing I. Like for part A, answer is Answer is, and then you do it, and then you press escape, WQ, save and quit. So once you are done with the first part, you can exit. Um, so there are, I think, maybe six different questions you have to answer. So we also tell you what is the file that is associated with this part of the assignment. So once you are done with this part, you should submit via Volcarm. I'll talk about Volcarm submission in a second. That's the first part. The second part is about debugging the code. It involves these two files. I think the explanation is fairly straightforward. There are bugs in this file with arrays.java. Um, so if you try to compile it in here, so you can list, there's this fun with arrays, fun with into arrays.java. 
so you can say Java C fun with arrays uh, dot Java. You can press tab to auto complete the file name. It's much faster. You compile it. There are a few errors. So you should go to that file, fix all the errors, and then uh, you can use this array tester dot Java too to test once you fix the bugs in this uh, Java file. Okay. So you should read through the file. Um, even after your code compiles with fun with int arrays, there may still be runtime errors or uh, logic errors. So you should fix all of them and write down your errors based on the format that we have provided in here in um, readme.md. Okay. So I think this part, the um, so list the bugs found in here and include a concise, a clear description of why the bugs are there. So this is the file you need to turn in. Uh, so you can submit again. Well, Karam will allow you to submit multiple times. Once you submit this part, you should sum together with md readme.md together. So just submit both files when you do the second submission. And it's really up to you to decide how, how often you want to submit. Okay. The third part is testing the code. This part can be a bit challenging to some of us. It's 10 out of 100 points. Um, you should read the, uh, the explanation in here. I'll skip that for you to read and also will tell you what are the possible cases in general that you would expect. Like these are the exceptions. We also have kind of a compiler error. Now for the task that we have, here is the task. So we implemented a method that finds anagrams. So given the array, so th this is basically the explanation. Okay. Um, where is it? I think it's in here. There are eight implementations of anagram finder. Given the array and the string, you're supposed to return how many anagrams of that string exist in the string array. Um, so the file that we give you is this file, anagram finder dot class. This file only contains the executable. So in other words, all those eight methods they are in this class file. They're in this class file. But you don't know how they were written. Okay. Your job is to test each of those methods through this anagram tester dot Java. So if you open this anagram tester dot Java, what is it does is there's this method called test p1. This method is used to test out the first implementation p1. p1 is the correct implementation, so it has no bugs, but from p2 to p8, there are bugs in them. So if you look at the main method, we just call this method test p1. In test p1, there are a few explanations of what it is. You create a sample string array, and then you pass this word and the array to anagram finder dot p1. p1 is a static method of the anagram finder class, so we can call it directly from the class. And based on this, you're gonna supposed to either catch a null pointer exception or something like that. And then in the end you can print out, this is optional. Your job is to write a similar testing method for test p2, p3, and p4. And based on what you pass, when you call the method, you may see errors on some situations, and that's what you need to report. Okay. So this is the testing part of the assignment. Um, you should turn in these two files, and also together with whatever files you have completed. So when you do a submission, submit all the files you have completed, not just the most up-to-date file, not just this anagram tester.java. You should test out, you should submit uh, all the files that you have uh, modified. Okay. I think the Caesar cipher part is fairly straightforward. It is kind of similar to a traditional assignment that you have seen before. So um, you need to implement a few methods, look at the libraries. So these are the methods you, you need to implement and there are explanations of what each method should do. So I'll skip that part. Um, 
I think that's about it. So these are the part of the, uh, the assignment. And then in the end, you have to kind of modify part of the readme based on the instructions in here. It's worth five points. And style is worth five points. As for how you should submit on Volcarium, so here is, um, well, before you, you can start the assignment, you really need to have your login on the server. So uh, you should uh, grab your login account from here. Right? So there is a link to this website. You enter UCSD email alias, enter PID. That's where you're going to see the login account. Right? That's where you're going to see the login account. That's what you're going to need to log in. Um, <coughs> for submission, since we are only remoting to the server, you really can't open the browser from here. So what I would recommend you to do is, at least for the first assignment, is you want to download a few files. So on the left side of mobile Xterm, you're going to see this window. This is the file that exists on the server. So for example, you can go through your downloads folder, um, create a new folder, maybe call this PSA1, PSA. Um, so get in here, then you start to download the stuff from the server to your local machine. So here, I want, I want to download all those things, for example. Then highlight them, click on download button, then you're going to be asked where you want to download those files to. Um, Downloads, uh, PSA. There we go. So the download process has started, um, and in here you can see all those files. Okay, so you can basically transfer all the files from the server to your local machine, and then you can upload. So you can log into Volcarium. I have a testing student account. So if I log in, oops. Um, here. I remember the password. Third try is golden. There we go. So <coughs> you come in here. Uh, this is the interface that you're going to use to submit. You click on the first assignment. Uh, for all the future assignments, you're going to see them listed over here. Okay, so you click on my work. And then you click on upload. So you go to PSA. For example, if I'm uploading these, you can press Control to highlight the files you want to submit. I can't remember which files you need to submit, but like for example, these are the Java files. Okay, and then it's going to be uploaded. There we go. So everything is successful wait until everything change from processing to successful all right so everything is done and you're going to see your files popping up on the left side i think it's still refreshing okay. you're going to submit so these are the files you you're going to click submit so are you sure you want to submit yes and then um, submission recorded so you can come here and look at what your submission record is. Um, so uh, you won't see your submission report as of now. So, but, but later on, once we set it up uh, near the uh, due date, you can see a submission report. But mostly what it does is to test whether your code compiles and also test your code on some uh, simple cases. Okay. So you can later on, you say, well, uh, let me uh, upload again to my class, and then uh, my work again. You can upload again, upload the most up-to-date files again, and do a resubmission. Later on. So, um, and then just click on submit again. You can submit as many times as you want to we will grade the latest submission. So it tells you, well, now you have two submissions. The, the last submitted was on this time. This is the due date. Okay. So, and this is 
where you're gonna track your grid to, um, and this is where you're gonna get your uh, feedback on the assignment too. So I think this is the recording for the logistics for PA1. If you still have questions, uh, ask on Piazza or talk to our tutors. All right. uh, that's it. Thank you.